Each side has two arsenals, which serve as the nodal points for a network of lines of communication. On their turn, the active player may move up to five playing pieces, which are in communication with at least one of their arsenals. The front line must always be connected to its supply bases in the rear. Troops can neither move nor fight without material assistance and political direction from these urban powerhouses. The art of war requires the support of a war economy. Learn from Bonaparte's divide and rule strategy when he first concentrated his forces to defeat the Austrian army defending Vienna in 1805 and then overwhelmed the Prussian forces protecting Berlin in 1806. Seizing control of these two capital cities ended, for the moment, organised resistance to French domination over Europe. But whatever happens, don't repeat Bonaparte's fatal mistake in 1812 of occupying Moscow while failing to protect his lines of communication from a counterattack by the Russian forces based in St. Petersburg. At the end of this campaign, it was the French army that had been cut off from its supply bases and eliminated. Successful generalship requires an intelligent combination of courage and caution. Play the game of war and you will learn how to dominate the bastions of political and economic power on the battlefields of modernity. When an army begins an operation, whether it is to attack the enemy and invade his theatre of war or to take up positions among its own borders, it necessarily remains dependent on the arsenals which are its sources of supply and replenishment, and it must maintain communication with them at all times. They constitute the basis of its existence and survival. The army and its arsenals must be considered as a single whole. Karl von Klaustowitz on war. Each new hour holds new chances, a new beginning. They are both the good guys and the bad guys. Champions of proletarian self-emancipation, striving to overthrow the bastions of bourgeois hegemony. The enemy's arsenals represent the political and ideological superstructure of capitalist exploitation, the centralised hierarchies of the state and the media. Their own arsenals are workers' councils, symbols of our class as the directing force of high-tech modernity. Their communication units are revocable delegates whose authority derives from the participatory institutions of cybernetic communism. As soon as they step outside the network of ley lines emanating from the workers' councils, the power of these generals instantly disappears. All those who play the game of war are situationists. Both sides have been set the same task, the ascendancy of interactivity over the institutions of daily life. Through the sensuous practice of successfully defending and attacking arsenals, they can become revolutionary theoreticians of proletarian self-emancipation. The best of them will apply these skills acquired by manoeuvring pieces across the board to win victories in the struggles that they've engaged in through everyday life. Class War Games is dedicated to creating moments in time and space where the fate of an arsenal is experienced at an intense, emotional, creative and intellectual level. Play the game of war and you will learn how to give your all to the fight for collective liberation. Reworking appropriated material not only leads to the discovery of new forms of creativity. In addition, clashing head-on with all social and legal conventions, it cannot fail to be a powerful weapon in the service of a real class struggle. The cheapness of its products is the heavy artillery which breaks through all the Chinese walls, blocking understanding. It is the real means of proletarian artistic education, the first step towards media communism. Guy Debord and Jill Woolman, Methods of Detournement. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change.